I've upgraded my home broadband to a 10 GB plan and my Unify router to a Unify Cloud Gateway Fiber. And not forgetting the U7 Pro XG access point. But is it worth it? And should you do it? Before I answer that, let's look at the questions from a few perspectives. Hi, Mike here. If this is your first time here, I'm a smart home business owner since 2014 and have done more than a thousand smart homes since. Recently, many of my previous clients has, have asked me if their Unify setup is able to support the new ISP broadband plans from 3 GBPS, 5 GBPS, and 10 GBPS. For foreign viewers, Singapore has a Smart Nation initiative that is slated to upgrade our national broadband network to 10 GBPS by 2016. As such, ISP have started offering higher speed plans since 2014 and have gotten more aggressive in pushing out these plans. Just to share, Singtel, Starhub, M1 are offering 3 to 10 GBPS plans starting from $39 a month. Smaller players like ViewQuest, View, uh, Wiscom, and Simba are offering 10 GBPS plan directly from as low as $29 per month. You can't even sign up a 1 GBPS plan anymore unless you are like on a business broadband. And I mean business broadband is like for SME and usually this plan has a lower uh, broadband speed compared to a residential plan. So it's no wonder our clients, both existing and new smart home owners, are asking, can I build or upgrade my network to fully utilize my new 10 GBPS broadband plan? But the most important question is, do you even need to fully utilize it? So usually for my clients, I have a common advice. Let's put things in perspective. Even if every member of your home, say a, mem a family of four or six, right? They're all streaming 4K's movie at the same time. You are still using less than one GBPS total. So in short, you're not even fully utilizing one GBPS let alone 3, 5, or 10. But if your motivation is to future-proof your home to get that few good moment when you run a speed test, you know, we like to say this like kaki test, kaki song, right? So what do I mean by kaki test, kaki song? It's a very singlish term. So uh, in, in pure English, you are saying own self test, own self shock. It means basically, I tested myself, I saw the number on the speed test and I feel good even if it doesn't really matter in real life so that's called kaki test kaki song so seriously you don't really need to have that unless you're looking for that kind of feeling I got that feeling but at a cost we can talk about the second question should you go for 2.5 GPS or a 10 GPS equipment setup because the cost is quite different every homeowner who we have implemented Wi-Fi using Unify, be it Unify, be it TP-Link, or be it Radia equipment. Right? The first thing they do is to run a speed test. It's the easiest way to feel that you have got back your value for investing in your Wi-Fi equipment. But here's something that most people don't realize. There's a difference between latency and speed. More accurately, throughput. Latency is how quickly your network responds. Um, think about gaming, think about voice call, think about Zoom, right? Throughput is how much data your network can push through. And that's what the speed test is showing you. Then there's another question on how you test your speed, right? Are you testing using Wi-Fi or testing using wired? There's a big difference. Your phone Wi-Fi antenna or your laptop's Wi-Fi card may only, may only support 1 to 2G even though your router supports 10. Then you might think, hey, why am, not getting, why am I not getting the speed that I, I'm supposed to have? But actually your device is the bottleneck. The biggest misunderstanding of speed test is that it only shows the throughput of a single device. So even on a 10 GB plan, your laptop, your device is not going to show you the full potential. To truly test the utilization, you need to have multiple devices running speed tests at the same time. But that's not what people mostly do. I mean, it's really just for 
the sake of it. Okay, now assuming that you already know the limitation of speed test and you still want to see that satisfying 9G screenshot. Now let me share with you my own experience. Previously, I was using um, Cloud Key Gateway Max that have a 2.5G WAN and four 2.5G LAN port uh, and just a unified 7 light uh, SS point. Of course, the SS point has a 2.5G port. And now I'm using Unify Cloud Gateway Fiber. It has 10G WAN, 2 SFP port, uh, 10G WAN, and 4 times 2.5G ports. I'm also using the U7 Pro XG with a 10G port so that I can at least make sure I have a 10G backhaul. For the wired testing, I use the uh, inbuilt speed test of Unify. You can see that the results for using a 2.5G broadband with a 2.5G router, you are reaching around 2.3G, right? But for the 10G, I am surprised. I'm only reaching about 7. It, even with a 10G plan, the Unify Gateway Fiber doesn't seem to be able to go beyond 7G on my Simba 10G plan. So I reached out to some of my gig friends. Same story. Eh? Uh, this might be a limit from the ISP backend or traffic shipping, right? Um, but if you have seen other results or better results on other ISPs or uh, network gears, please leave a comment to let me know. That's for the wired test. For the Wi-Fi test, I did both tests standing right under the AP, right? So for the first test, uh, with my original 2.5 setup, I'm getting around 1.4G max. And not surprisingly, on my new 10G setup, I'm only getting at most 2G. Most of the time I hit 1.9 you are not getting anywhere near 5 or 6G like the marketing claims. Okay, next, let's talk about cost. So just for consistency sake, since Singapore pricing for unified devices varies across the party distributor, and you don't really see Cloud Gateway Fiber available on Singapore Unify store, this is the price that I pulled out using the Unify US store as a basis of comparison. So my 2.5G setup costs around 400 Sing dollars. My 10G setup costs around 750 Sing dollars. And that is a 80% cost different. I'm not talking about deploying 10G switches with multiple AP, right? I mean, if you have to deploy 10G switches with multiple 10G AP, the cost will balloon up. Here's my honest conclusion. Yes, upgrading to a 10G Wi-Fi setup does give you a higher number. For wired, you're getting from 2.3 to maybe around 7G. For Wi-Fi, you're just upgrading for around 1.4 to close to 2. Right, but that comes at almost double the price for the gains you won't feel in day-to-day -day usage. Of course, if you're building a new home and want to future-proof and maybe you are doing 4 to 8K editing of a nest, yeah, maybe that makes sense. But for most of us, you probably get more value by investing in good Wi-Fi coverage, as in you get more APs, right, on a 2.4G uh, setup. Yep, so let me know what plans you are on and what is the highest speed you have seen. i like to know your results. Once again, if you found this video useful, give a like and subscribe for more smart home tests coming soon. This is Mike, signing out. Bye-bye.